So um, thank you everyone for joining us uh, at the Go Virtual Career Pathways Conference. I am Pamela Rabin. I'm from the EdTech Department at the San Diego County Office of Education in the Innovation Division. And I am your host today. Um, we are asking that attendees keep themselves muted unless otherwise asked to unmute during the presentation. It's a good sized group today, not too big, not too small. So I'll leave that up to the presenters and they'll ask. Um, and again, the, the session is being recorded if you just popped in. So right now I would like to introduce um, Betsy McKinstry, Diane Walker and Dwayne Robert Robertson who are coming from uh, Antelope Valley Union High School District today. They're presenting um, using Google Classroom for effective teacher collaboration and communication. Thank you so much for being here today. I'm gonna hand it over to you now. Thank you so much, Pam. Can you go back a slide, Dwayne? Uh, so um, thank you for um, facilitating, Pam. We really appreciate um, that role um, when you're doing a virtual presentation. Um, and if you could, um, just so we get to know who is in um, this session, if you could take a moment just to introduce yourself and your um, position and organization in the chat when you have a moment. Next slide. And my name is Betsy McKinstry. I'm the um, Director of Career Technical Education for Antelope Valley Union High School District. Um, and my CTE team includes Mr. Robertson. Good morning, or I'm sorry, good afternoon. Thank you all for being here. My name is Dwayne Robertson, and I am the CTE Coordinator for the Antelope Valley High School District. Unmute, right? Hi there, I'm Diane Walker, and I'm the Director of Industry Liaison and Post-Secondary Partnerships for the Antelope Valley Union High School District. Next slide. So one of the things we want to get started with is the fact that um, our mission and vision statement does drive um, everything we do within CTE and really is the foundation for our decision-making process. So you can see that um, our mission statement does include rigorous curriculum and technical skills, um, and also to be able to work within the 21st century. The other piece is, is that we've changed our vision statement several years ago to, um, instead of college or any career, to change it to the college and any career. Um, which we know in CTE is one of the things when we look at data that students need to be prepared for both. Next slide. So we are a little bit far from where you possibly are, um, but we're, our district is um, 65 miles north of the downtown Los Angeles. It covers 1,200 square miles, which is approximately the size of Rhode Island. Um, and many of you probably have heard of our area because we're known as the Aerospace Valley and we're, we're so thankful that we have innovation happening right here within our region. Um, we compromise, we, our district is made up of um, 11 schools, eight comprehensive high schools, two alternative schools, one early college and one dependent charter. We serve 21,000 high school students we're a Title I district with 73% of our students um, on free and reduced lunch. And some of our schools um, have close to 100% of their students. And then from a CTE perspective, we have 78 career technical education teachers. Um, all but a few are full-time. And 81% of those CTE teachers have both a single subject credential and a CTE credential. Our enrollment by grade level and ethnicity that you can see that we really, our um, student body is primarily African-American and has Hispanic Latino um, and proportionate grade level um, for uh, as far as the population goes. Next slide. Thank you. 
And like many of you um, in the career technical education world, and those of you that are working with link learning or the graduate student profile, we did create a graduate student profile um, several years ago for our district. Um, these are basically the key areas um, um, that our graduate student profile is under. We actually also have a um, senior defense in many of our career technical education um, driven academies um, that we're working on and we're expanding that senior defense system based on our graduate student profile. But we wanted to call out some of the um, pieces of that graduate student profile that really support what we're talking about today. Um, to generate and transform original ideas through the development of new products, projects, and concepts, to build a community, to commit um, to um, our purpose with other um, achievable goals, and to effectively deliver um, information and opinions as far as being a communicator. Next slide. Okay, and I, that means that I'm up. So I know we're all dealing with our new reality, right? And how many of you remember where you were on March 13th? Right, March 13th and March 16th are kind of pivotal days in what happened uh, to us in the spring with the public health crisis. And we all had to pivot in one way or another. Um, those of you who are classroom teachers, you had to uh, just decide what was going to happen. For us, uh, Dwayne, Betsy, and I are the CTE unit, if you will, but we are also part of our district's ed services unit. And we created a sort of triage planning team immediately at the district level to determine what directions we were going to take for our teachers and our students. In our case, we extended spring break for a week uh, to give an additional time for planning. Uh, so we had a week and then spring break and then uh, came back after that. Our district immediately sent out some needs assessment surveys to students and teachers wanting to know what do you need? What are your pain points? What are some areas where we can come alongside to support you? And as you might know, of course, I'm sure we all felt the same way. We needed some professional learning, some professional development options. And so we have a wonderful coordinator of professional development and two folks on her team who immediately came up with some PD offerings in a distance learning format on basic tools. We're a Google district. We have very many Google certified educators, but we also have many teachers who didn't routinely use technology. Um, and so just coming alongside them. And then of course, students, we're a very mixed area. We have urban, semi-urban and very rural, uh, very agricultural areas with no internet infrastructure. So finding devices and hotspots and finding ways to provide students access and families access. Um, during that fourth quarter, we distributed, <clears throat> excuse me, about 7,000 Chromebooks and several hundred um, hotspots to students and, and parents so that they could access those. So that was kind of our triage. Where did we go from there? Next slide, please. Okay, so uh, we're going to do a quick activity. If you can, uh, just um, go to kahoot.it and then I will uh, fire up the little game that we have. Um, this is in response to any challenges, uh, as Di Diane forementioned, any challenges that you may have occurred uh, while um, making that same type of pivot that we had to make, okay? If you look at the screen, it's going to show you the code that you can use. And then I will wait till you guys join and then we will start our, we only have three questions, so it's not gonna take that long. Kahoot.it and all you have to do is enter the game pin. Can I put that? And I'm 
what's, the, what's my lucky number? I think we're waiting for 27, folks. Oh, we actually have 43. Wow, okay. I'll wait a little bit longer. And again, we're, we're just going to try to identify if we have uh, within our group here amongst all these different schools and school districts, if we had any similar challenges. Okay, so actually 40. Okay, we're stuck on 33. Is that our number? All right, I'll give it about 10 more seconds and then we'll start. If anyone else is going to join. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. So here's question number one. And away you go. Identify the CTE challenges that you experienced during the pivot. Okay. Very good. We have most of these and then internet. All right, let's try one more. Try to identify all of the CTE challenges that you've had. Okay, so the majority had all three of these. Okay, last one. Let's see if we could get more of your challenges. Oh, moving to online was the second one. Very good. Okay. Let's see if we have any winners. Great quiche. Kayla, do we have another K? <laughs> All right. Very good. Very good. Well, those are uh, some of the ones that we had identified. Uh, let me stop this there so we don't have that music going. Uh, those are some of the ones that we had identified um, within our CTE group. And um, I think that some of those were very similar to what you guys had as well. Um, I want to just take another minute or so and uh, just go in the chat and let us know how did you approach those challenges at the beginning, uh, as Diane mentioned, March 13th and March 16th, um, when we had to go to remote learning. Just uh, go to the chat and uh, let us know what you guys did. Um, Diane kind of um, explained what our ed services did and what we, uh, what we implemented as a CTE unit. Um, we just want to see what the room has as well. I'll just give you guys a couple of minutes for that. And if you had any problems or challenges that weren't listed in those three questions, we'd be interested to hear what those are as well.
So David changed the curriculum from live performance of musical theater to self-tape training for auditions and pre-screens for arts colleges. Yeah. Upgraded internet services at home, yeah. Watched a lot of YouTube videos to start up Google Classroom. Absolutely. Uh, yep, we all kind of learned internet access for students or low cost and free internet providers. Lots and lots of calling to parents learning zoom crisis teaching boy we all went through that right um communication seems to be key uh, somebody else keisha used kahoot so there you go there she was and google slides uh lots of tutorials and just dive off the deep end right uh, no formal training and matt was still in teacher prep programs he talked to his professors lots of very good, very good. Um, okay, so moving on, um, Diane, Bessie, and I, we're just going to share with you some of the tools and some of our planning and implementations that we uh, implemented for our school district, for our CTE uh, teachers. Um, one of the things we did, as, as was mentioned before, I don't know if it was fortunate, uh, but Luckily, we added, our school district added a week to our spring break after March 16th. We had one more week of school and then we had spring break. So on March 16th, they extended our spring break by a week, which enabled uh, Betsy, Diane, and I to spend that week of the first two weeks of uh, spring break planning on uh, how we were going to deliver our remote learning to all, all of our CTE students and um, resources for our teachers. So this is part of our planning stage. We reviewed um, our tech tools. Um, and by the title of this course, we are a Google district. So we lean heavily on the Google tools that we had available to us. Um, and we kind of determined which were going to be the best tools that we were going to use um, uh, in the remote learning format. Uh, the three of us as administrators for CTE, we divided up our industry sectors. So uh, we each took several of our different industry sectors. So we were responsible for a certain uh, industry sectors. And then we went and we went online, YouTube, uh, CTE online, anybody's website. Uh, uh, we were reviewing webinars just so we can get a library of resources for our CTE teachers. Uh, remember, they were on spring break. So we took that time to start curating a lot of resources for our teachers so when they came back um, they had we pretty much had uh, a wealth of information and resources for them um, we created google classrooms and i think i have a screenshot of of that well actually in the in the kahoot that image that you saw was uh actually a a, a screenshot of my google classrooms and uh, for each one of our industry sectors, we created a Google Classroom and we put all those resources in those Google Classrooms. So the, uh, uh, when the teachers returned, they had access to those Google Classroom. It already had links there. We had other um, resources where we put links as well as part of our district and ad services as a whole. Um, we uh, invited all of the teachers as students. So Betsy, Diane, and I were the teachers for the for that classroom, and all of the teachers were students. Um, we put uh, resource links and best practices and um, flyers, images, documentations in the stream of the Google Classroom for the teachers to access um, as they as needed. Um, and then one other thing that we did, besides having um, weekly office hours, we also met with our industry sectors weekly and bi-weekly, which turned out to be very, very helpful 
um, for those teachers. Um, inside the um, weekly and bi-weekly industry sector meetings, um, one of the main things that we did was we checked in on the teachers to see how they were doing because it was a very emotional time for everyone. You know, uh, all the teachers had to switch all their lesson plans from face-to-face, -face, hard copy, classroom type of environment to an online environment. So uh, the Little Kahoot activity was some of the challenges that we identified and the teachers identified as well. So having those, um, having those weekly meetings with the um, teachers uh, and they were broken, broken up by industry sectors was very, very helpful and they really appreciated that. Um, one other thing that we did is we created lead teachers. Um, I had the arts, media and entertainment sector and uh, when everything was put into motion, um, several teachers were having uh, uh, technology problems. Some of their students couldn't find, couldn't have access to certain apps and things like that. And I couldn't troubleshoot all those by myself. So um, we identified lead teachers in, we identified lead teachers in each of the industry sectors to kind of assist us and help uh, teachers that were struggling or needed uh, additional resources and things of that nature. Uh, lastly, what we did was, of course, we, um, for our uh, feedback and ongoing loop, um, we had a survey and uh, uh, that survey was about uh, needs assessment. Uh, what did the teachers need? We had uh, in the Antelope Valley, we have some teachers that are in a rural area, so we had to send those teachers. They had to um, get permission to go on site so they can have internet access at a school site um, and things of that nature. So we, we did a survey and we kind of identified the um, uh, needs of the teachers, and that was one of the other things that we used in our planning stages um, when we implemented the new remote learning. Um, and uh, using Google uh, as a Google district, most of the tools that we relied on and that we uh, failed to as a default were the, um, the Google tools. Can I jump in there for just a second, Dwayne? Sure. Um, yes. It's not to say that we exclusively use Google tools. We had training on Nearpod, on Kahoot, on quizzes, and all of the different apps that teachers like to use. Um, so those PDs that were offered by the district were recorded, and they're still available asynchronously. And they might have had at a beginning level, intermediate level, and advanced level, and the teachers can still go back and access those um, PDs. So maybe they they said, okay, I'm pretty good with Google Classroom now, but I want to try something new. So they're still able to go back and, and get those tools. And um, right here, um, I have some, a, a few of the teachers' comments from the implementation of setting up the Google Classrooms, the resources that we had available for them when they returned from spring break. Um, so we did all that and we kept it going. We still had our off office hours where teachers would just um, come into a, a Google Meet for a, a certain period of time and they can ask questions, discuss anything that they needed to discuss. Um, ask for other resources. If they had technology issues, we had those office hours for each one of our uh, industry sectors. So um, uh, being able to divide that up into thirds, our industry sectors, and then be able to give the time that the teachers needed, the office hours that the teachers needed, um, uh, proved to be beneficial for how we turned it around and went towards the uh, remote learning. And next is Diana. That's Betsy. Oh, Betsy. So um, one of the things just want to point out is, is that um, we were, um, we selected our industry um, 
areas based on what our background and experiences were. So um, Diane was a former attorney. <laughs> and so she took pu public service. She worked with STEM. Um, Dwayne did arts and media and engineering because he had a background in that and he taught in an engineering and multimedia academy. And then I had a business background. Um, and so I took the business sector and the ag sector. So we were um, very thoughtful about who would get what so that when we curated the resources, we kind of knew what um, type of level they would be and whether they would be beneficial to our teachers. Um, so um, Dwayne, if you could go back, we skipped a slide, um, a slide right before the um, graduate student profile slide. There we go. I... Is this it? No, one more up. One more? No, not back, forward. So I, I didn't um, just give you a scope of our career technical education programs. I'm not gonna read all this, but you can just see why for our district, because CTE is so embedded in what we do, um, the scope of what the CTE teachers needed. So um, just some highlights that we have 40 pathways in nine industry sectors, and we have pathways at every single of the eight comprehensive high schools, as well as the alternative school. 40% um, of our students take at least one CTE course. Um, we are embedded with the ed services team and make decisions for CTE strategically with the curriculum, um, coordinators for the core subjects, the EL coordinator, professional development, et cetera. We do receive um, almost $3 million of LCAP funding for our CTE programs. And then that's supplemented through additional grant funding. So just so you know that we, we couldn't, um, we really had to focus on career technical education as a comprehensive piece of our district um, ed services team. Thanks, Dwayne. So can you move forward? Say stop when you want me to stop. Okay. Mm -hmm. yep. <laughs> Too fast with the clicker. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, you know, a few things that we definitely learned from this and that we're taking away, um, you know, we all are talking about the, the new normal um, and we're also talking about, um, hey, the system needed some change. And so um, we would have liked it not to happen like that. Um, but really kind of saying, oh, what are, what are some really benefits of this particular process and, and using Google Classroom? So, uh, you know, definitely from a communication standpoint, we were able to create communities within the industry sectors where they shared resources. They, they also shared just, you know, building relationships and sharing of um, information and just figuring out, hey, I'm moving and I got caught in COVID or my kids are sick or I'm having to deal with. That was also a definitely part of the industry sector meetings. Um, we had pacing guides that we um, developed for this incoming, this year coming up. Um, at the beginning of this year, and we continued, um, we'll be continuing with that. We um, still participate in webinars now. And then what grew out of that was a summer pilot also for using a UCCI course and um, the engineering and math teachers working together on an algebra UCCI course that um, allowed them to work um, from different school sites in a Google Classroom setting. Um, we continue with office hours. In fact, we have a professional development next week and we'll have office hours for CTE teachers. Um, we continue, we'll continue the industry sector meetings with this format to look at data from the comprehensive local needs assessment. So we're doing it within the Google Classrooms that we set up last spring. And then we um, also had industry participation and we'll continue that of coming into the Google Classroom based on the in industry sector. 
We also um, did more alignment within the district. So sometimes what happens, uh, we all know, especially from a CTE perspective, that you know that that CTE and that they're kind of sometimes been looked at as a stepchild or a separate siloed entity. But excuse me, but we really um, uh, increased the awareness of what CTE did among our Ed Services staff. And now um, we use Ed Central, um, which is a link for all professional development resources, et cetera, from a district standpoint, to put our CTE resources in there as well. So a CTE teacher can go in there and look at something for math and something for CTE. So we don't have a separate system. It is a district system that, we, that encourages that. And I think Diane was possibly gonna put the link or somebody, the link in the chat for you to take a look at Ed Central. We had a, a wonderful Ed Services team that kind of created that site with a lot of our input. So, so the Ed Central site is inward facing to our district, but we have eight K through eight feeder districts that come into us and they were looking for resources as well. So our uh, data guru created a separate website called edcentral.net. And that link is in the chat and that is available to anyone. So just like San Diego County Office of Ed has been so generous with their crowdsourced resources, we thought that's really important. So you can go in and search by keyword. Let's say you wanna see ag or media or drama or, or um, anything else in a CTE uh, field. You can, ch you can choose or just CTE, choose that and search by keyword and look and see what kinds of resources are in there. So uh, work-based learning or service learning or virtual uh, um, trips, things like that. You can go in and find those. So just wanted to make that available to you as well. Next slide, back to me. All right, and we have another activity. We really want to get everyone involved, and this is a Jamboard. Um, I hope everybody's starting to use Jamboard as part of Google Meet. It's a really great free um, whiteboard collaborative um, collaborative tool. And I've just put the link into the chat for a Jamboard where we would like you all to go and we'd like to kind of crowdsource. What kinds of tech tools have you used to become more effective since March of 2020? Um, and maybe we could also hear from someone if you have just the, the greatest tip, feel free to unmute yourself um, or we can unmute you and um, let us know what is a great tip or trick, whether for Google Classroom or another Google tool. And I know it's been a, a little bit subtle, but really, what we want everybody to realize is that um, we're trying to model the use of Google Classroom with our teachers. And we had to learn these things too. We had all used Google Classroom a little bit. We had used Google Docs a lot. Um, I know I'm a level two uh, Google educator, but I'm not in the classroom anymore. So uh, trying to find ways to get more proficient with that, we were kind of going through the same thing. And I know uh, Betsy and Dwayne did as well and just becoming more proficient at that. Um, it's really a, a lifelong learning thing, right? So we're getting some great uh, tools in there. Padlet, we use that a lot. Loom was one that I, I lobbied for. Um, I thought that was really good. Canva is great for infographics. Uh, Mentimeter I've heard of before, but I'm not really familiar with it. Does somebody want to tell what Mentimeter is? I think is that polling? Whoever put Mentimeter up? Yeah, and if you haven't used Jamboard before, there are some really cool tools on there. Edpuzzle we use also. Uh, Pear Deck is, is kind of a slide deck and like Nearpod, is that right? Feel free. Does anybody want to raise your hand or um, let us know? Unmute yourself. I don't see any raised hands. Okay. 
Okay, Screen, Screencast-O-Matic, another really good one to provide step-by-step -step instructions for students. Whiteboard.fi, I haven't used that one. Who'd like to explain what that one is? That's me. It's, it's just a quick, easy, interactive whiteboard where um, you as the teacher have yours and the students each have their own individual ones, similar to Pear Deck, but just a little quicker to get started with. Very cool, very cool. And uh, Jamboard, as I mentioned, has a lot of really neat tools, right? You can use a pencil, you can erase things, you can uh, put in a shape, if you'd like, uh, insert a, an image, um, there's a laser pointer with it, a lot of really neat tools. And in our industry sector meeting a couple of weeks ago, we used that with the teachers. They, many of them had not used it before and asked them to collaborate on uh, looking at data and just providing different feedback. And it really was pretty effective. Uh, math teachers have told me that they use it as well. It's very good to help um, just show um, how they're working out a problem, getting the students to do it, and then going in and being able to provide feedback. So any other, okay, so Mentimeter is polling, word clouds, and Q&A. Very good. I think I'm gonna try that one as well. I love trying new, new tools. Oh, great, collected Jamboards. Thanks, Pam. Well, definitely, uh, I'm gonna get that one in there so that I can go there. All right, next slide, please. Unless, does anyone else have anything else they'd like to add there? Okay. Trying to copy this, the link for the Jamboards. Oh, it's not letting me, so I'll have to go back. All right, there we go, got it. Okay, um, so just to kind of wrap up and give you time for questions and answers before we get there is, what do you wonder about? What are some questions that you have about how to use Google Classroom best? And maybe what's one thing that you heard today that you could implement in your practice? So let's take a couple of minutes. Please do feel free to unmute yourself. We'd love to hear from you if you're comfortable to do that. Otherwise you can post it in the chat. Love to hear your voice. Otherwise, I might call on Amelia since I see she's in there. One of our, our great friends. Um, I saw a lot of resources. I saw a lot of resources that I have not uh, even heard of, like Mentimeter. It sounds like something I could really use with my kids. So it's good that uh, everybody was sharing because there's some new things that I hadn't heard of before. Great, thank you. Who else? The first one's always the hardest, right? What do you wonder about in how you're using Google Classroom? Either about your students or with your colleagues? All right, we've got a shy bunch today, so you can always post something in the chat if you'd like. And then if you go to the next slide, please, um, we have the, just love to take any questions. One more, Duane, we can still take questions, but we have the um, certificate of completion in case you need that for your professional development plan or professional growth plan. You can take a picture of that from the screen. And still willing, we have a couple of minutes left. We'd love to hear any questions or comments you may have. I'm also going to include the link to the evaluation form. It really does help us if you can fill that out um, to make sure that we're doing a good job with our conferences. So uh, I'll put that in next. And I'll just give a shout out. There have been some wonderful sessions. I've been to two great sessions today and see some more tomorrow. So really recommend that you jump in as much as you can. Um, so as you see, our emails are here. So if you think of something later or just would prefer not to ask the question here, feel free to contact us. We'd be happy to answer any questions you may have or um, just chat. 
Diane, this is Carla Morrokin um, and Walker. I do have two questions. Um, I haven't, I've been watching a lot of YouTubes, but they haven't answered these, so hopefully this is a forum. So the first one that, um, has to do with, uh, so let me premise, I have a family who doesn't want any of the work shared or seen by anyone else. So um, when, when the um, scholars or students put their work onto or turn in their work onto a folder. It seems like what I see is I could see all the kids' folders. Can other families see each other's folders? Do you know? Uh, unless sharing is turned on, um, you can make restrict that so that only you can see the work that's turned in and the folders that are turned in so that you maintain the student's privacy. Um, so that's something in your settings in your Google Classroom that you can, can take care of. Wonderful, thank you. And in that line also, um, when they work, uh, it seems like it could, um, they could connect directly to my, how do you say, Google, I don't know what they call it, but to like um, Docs and Google Docs and Google, it's not Excel anymore, I'm sorry, I'm showing my age. Oh, Google Sheets, yeah. Google Sheets. Yeah. <laughs> Great. So none of that could they see unless I, I share it with them. Is that correct? That's correct. You can restrict access. So, for example, we had an industry strategic planning meeting this morning and I, I shared the Jamboard with them, just like I shared a Jamboard with you. And then I can go in and take that um, out so that only people who are added to the Jamboard can access it. Um, and so you can restrict access. The same thing with a Google Doc. You might want to have an individual conversation or have an individual slide with a particular student or colleague. You can create the doc so that it's only shared with specific people, not with anyone who has the link. And it seems like sometimes um, the families could change the setting from just viewer to editor. I'm wondering if they could do that. Uh, or it's because uh, I thought I said it, but then it changes. So I'm not sure what you Pam, know. They, they Pam might have the answer to that. I'm not sure if someone other, if you make someone an editor in the beginning, you can change their permissions back to viewer or commenter. But I know that there's a way that you can change the link at the end to be sharing and things like that. Pam, do you have insight on that one? So if you're, I mean, if you're, let me see if I understand the question correctly. Um, if you are, you're wondering if a student can, after the fact, change the yes. settings like after you've shared something with them. As long as they are the owner, they can always go in and share it to whatever setting they prefer. Um, so they could even just share it to you only, if that makes sense, um, by going into the share settings. And then they would put in your email address rather than anyone with a link can see it. Um, I think I, I, if I'm understanding the, again the, quest, the question correctly. Right. Yes. If you grant them access originally as a viewer or a commenter, then they can't add other people, right, without requesting access. Right. And they will have to download it in order to edit it. The other thing that you can do, um, it's a little bit of extra work, but just so you keep your original files, you can always make a copy and then share the copy only and you keep your okay. original just in case they do change something you still have the original so uh by default most google uh google items are private to you and you have to click on share to give other people access so by creating that um a copy you keep the integrity of your original file and there's also a way you can force them to have to make a copy and not change your original document. Yeah, I heard. Yeah, I heard of that. Something about co put copy at the end. I I didn't catch it very well, but something like that. Yes. The link that I just put in the chat, for example, there's one for a uh, link to the certificate. At the very end of it, if you're looking at the chat, you'll see this edit. Um, when you go to paste a link like that somewhere, you would. Um, in the URL bar, just copy it. And when you paste it wherever you want it, you would um, delete the word edit and add copy, and that will force a copy. So when they go to it, um, it'll say, make a copy for yourself. Um, and they won't even be able to view your, your 
uh, document, whatever it is, until they make that copy. Um, you can also put in, and I can't remember if it's preview slash template or template slash preview, but that, that causes it to become a template, and then they get a little button that says use as a template. Um, that's just another little trick. Uh, and the only other thing I can think of oh, that I was going to tell you was when you're giving sharing permissions to an individual at that top level, not the anybody with a link can share level, you can also set a date for when you would want that permission to expire. So if there's someone you're giving temporary access to something, there is the ability to always um, to set a date when that, when that level of sharing would change. Great, thank you. I have a question. Yes. Uh, Dana Abercrombie with Learn for Life in Palmdale. I'm from your neck of the woods. Hi, Dana. Uh, hi. Um, I teach a marketing sales and service pathway, basically entrepreneurship. It's very, it, the curriculum was piloted last year, very one-on-one, -on -one, team-oriented, person-to-person, a skill that's not um, taught that much anymore. It's more technology, but we decided to get our kids um, um, communicating and working as a group. Um, therefore, I've had to switch gears totally. I'm wondering about in Google, breaking my kids into teams. We go to the Google Classroom, meet in the main classroom. Is Should I just be developing additional classes that overlap my class, calling them something else, and sending teams out to join those classrooms to break out um, into teams and then telling them what time they have to be back into the main classroom? Does this make yeah. sense? You have two great options there. No, you don't have to do that. Okay. <laughs> One is that when you go to your um, list of people, uh -huh. your, uh, you can create groups of uh -huh. students and have them work in a uh, create an assignment for a particular group so you can create okay. groups that way and a brand new feature that just rolled out last week is woohoo breakout hmm. rooms in google meet so oh, okay so you oh. can set up different breakout rooms within your main uh, classroom and have those groups okay move in the uh, work in the separate meeting rooms and honestly i haven't tried it yet it just popped up on my google meets on friday nice. um so I, that's one of my um chores for this week is to learn how to use that better oh great it, it, it is a good tool um it, uh, you have a choice you can randomize you can let google meet randomize the uh breakout rooms uh -huh. or you can once um students join your Google Meet, when you go to the breakout room, you will see their names and you could just drag and drop their names into whatever group you want. Wonderful. Okay, and then you just bring them all back together. And stop the main room. With nice, thank you so much. <laughs> Would you recommend breakout rooms for younger students? Um, one of my, um, I'm a education coordinator, so I service Native youth. And one of my students had mentioned that um, he was in a like in a group, and one of the they were supposed to be working on a math problem, and there was another student that was erasing everybody's work. So by the time they got back together with the teacher, like their work was gone. So it looked like their group hadn't done anything. So I recommend breakout rooms if there's not like a teacher's aide to like monitor those other groups. So Karen, I think a, a couple of things that you could do is one, again, having each student have a copy of their work of the assignment so that nobody else has access to it. By forcing that copy, the other student can't erase the work. Um, but also, um, and again, this is something that one of our fabulous PD people told me about is called, uh, it's a Google Chrome extension called Tab Muter. So, you know, you have different tabs open and then you can mute it. As the teacher, you can pop into all of those different breakout rooms and be checking on them. You could even have them all open at one time and, and make sure that things are going well. But again, by having that forced copy of the assignment, the other student's not gonna have access to it. Unless you're having them work on a collaborative Google Doc with the four of them, then you can go and look at the version history and you'll be able to tell what student entered what, changed what, and it will show that the work has been done. So 
you know, it's a, it's a work in progress, right? You have to determine how the students are, are able to adjust to it, but there are ways that you can still um, ensure that you're seeing what the student's work is and so forth. Great questions. I think we're probably kind of about at the end of our time, aren't we, Pam? Uh, we definitely are. Um, I think there is coming up next. There's a keynote. There's a keynote, and then I think uh, kind of a social hour is what they're calling it. So I do want to get you to those on time. So thank you very much, um, Diane, Betsy, and Dwayne. We really do appreciate having you come in and show us what you're doing up in Antelope Valley. I myself took extensive notes. <laughs> <laughs> great. Done, but yeah, you definitely had some great ideas in there, so um, do appreciate it. And thank you everybody for attending, and uh, we hope we can see you all tomorrow for the next session. So enjoy. I'll, sorry, I'll take a picture of that Jamboard and I can upload that as a resource as well so that people can see those. All right. Thank you thank so much. Thank you guys. Have a good thank day. You. Take care. Bye. Have a good afternoon.